Today I'm reviewing a tripod, a tiny travel tripod, because I needed it for an upcoming trip. So I guess you could call it a tiny travel trip tripod. But it's okay if you don't want to call it that. Let's get undone. Gerald Undone. He's crazy. What is happening everybody? I'm Gerald Undone and today we're going to be looking at the Andour 57 inch travel tripod. Now, quick disclaimer about this tripod, which also has a bit of a fun coincidence attached to it. I have a shoot coming up next week that has very specific weight and size requirements for what I'm allowed to bring. So I was debating on whether or not to bring my current travel tripod that I already have, bring a monopod, bring like a Joby Gorilla Pod, or just bring nothing at all. And that list got significantly shorter when I realized that my current travel tripod was doing this. And while I was planning this, I received a timely email from Andour, which was asking me to review this tripod, which is even lighter and even more compact than the travel tripod that I already have. Anyway, so that's my story, and basically, I, I just like it when things like that happen. But also, that's to let you know a bit of a disclaimer, that this product was given to me for free, Andour contacted me and approached me about reviewing this product, but I was not paid to make this review, and the opinions that I give are my own, because I'm as curious as you guys are to figure out whether or not this tripod is any good because I need to know whether or not I can rely on it to bring it to my shoot next week. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the spec. So this guy, when completely collapsed, is about 19 inches or 48 centimeters. And it's just a little bit shorter than that when you're at your minimum working height, which I think is about 18 inches. So it might actually be pretty decent for like some tabletop vlogging scenarios. Extended, it reaches 48 inches or 122 centimeters. And that's with the center column down. But then if you jack the center column all the way up, it gets to 57.5 inches or 146 centimeters. And it it weighs about 1.1 kilos or 2.4 pounds. So while it's not the tallest tripod in the world, it definitely is light and compact. And it's about five inches or 11 centimeters in diameter when it's collapsed like this. And it comes with a decent little bag for storage and carry. One thing that I like about it is that the legs come in four sections rather than the typical three. You know, this has some obvious pros and cons to it. The cons would be that you physically have to open and close more clamps to get it fully extended. And also then when it is extended, its stance is a little bit more narrow, which could lead to a little bit of instability, but the pros of that means you get a more compact build and you take up less real estate when you are fully extended, which is better for working in smaller spaces. Now the instability thing that I just raised can be addressed by the fact that they added a hook to the bottom of the center column here, which will allow you to hang a counterweight from it, but the hook is plastic and I'm not really sure how much weight it can handle. So we'll put it to the test. I have a 15 pound sandbag that we will use and see if it can hold that up. The 15 pound sandbag might be a bit excessive because the capacity of this tripod is seven pounds. So I can't really see a person needing to use a 15 pound sandbag for a seven pound camera rig. But this will give us a strong idea of whether or not this hook is gonna live up to the challenge or if it's gonna break off. All right, well that actually worked out quite well and I was a little bit surprised because I went over double the capacity. Another thing that I wanted to talk about was that it says that it has aluminum construction. And this is referring of course to the legs because the rest of the joints and fixtures are all plastic but that's kind of to be expected for a tripod at this price point. Speaking of price point, it comes in at $41.99 Canadian, which is about $32 US, and is a little bit cheaper than some of the competing models I've seen in this uh, design, which are usually in the $50 to $60 category, and it comes with a phone clamp, which is actually pretty decent uh, construction, and uh, nice and solid, and a good fat grip on it. And uh, I paid like $20 just for one of these alone from Joby, so it's a nice little value add. And the phone clamp has quarter 20 threads on both the side and the bottom, so I think that's cool that they added that in. Now like I was saying, there are comparable models online with different heads and features, but I think this one's a little bit better for me because this is definitely a video focused head with the way that it tilts and pans. And while it's not really comparable to a quality fluid head, the knob on the side here does actually provide a decent amount of incremental resistance when it comes to panning. 
that uh, I think is pretty good for, for a plastic build. The mount on top is a standard quarter 20 screw and it also features some nice spongy textured grips on all three of the legs. Now I tested this tripod with the Panasonic Lumix G9 and the 12 to 35 millimeter lens, which is more in line with the kind of travel friendly gear that I would be bringing on a shoot that would have the weight and size requirements that would need me to use a tripod like this. If I was doing a bigger production, I would bring a bigger camera or a rigged up GH5 and then I would bring my bigger tripod to go along with that. But just for fun, let's give it a try with the Sony a7 III and the Sigma 35mm f1.4, which is a pretty sizable combination for like a compact mirrorless camera, with the Sigma being quite a hefty lens and the Sony being a full frame camera. So with a heavier lens like the Sigma here, it definitely requires a little bit of assistance in order to get a smoother pan. When the weight of the Sigma is allowed to sink down like that, it's, it's a lot jerkier. Uh, I guess that's one of the cons of having such a lightweight plastic head is that it can't really keep smooth. It's okay. When you support the lens, it's okay. But if you just let it go and try to turn it like you would with a fluid head, it's really quite jerky. So there's ways to get around it. A little bit of counterweight on the on the back side of the handle will make it a bit smoother. Overall, you know, it, it, whenever you're in this price point, it's kind of hard to really make a strong, as it's like, this doesn't perform as well as my $350 head. Of course not. It, the whole tripod is 40 bucks, but it's not bad. I think for, for what you get, you could definitely get some work done with it, but it would not replace a high quality fluid head. Which brings me to one of my last points, which is that the words professional and semi-professional get thrown around a lot when it comes to photo video accessories. And I think instead we should be focusing on purpose. Tripods like this are not intended for lifetime longevity or professional productions in my opinion. Instead, I think that they serve two specific purposes. One is a lightweight stopgap, like what I'm gonna be using it for in the upcoming shoot when I can't actually bring the big gear that I wanna be bringing. And two would be more kind of like a semi-disposable travel tripod. And I don't mean disposable like you plan to throw it away, but that instead you plan on putting it in situations or taking it to places where it's to fill a very specific, probably temporary need. Now if you're a first time tripod buyer, but you're serious about photography or videography, I recommend that you go right into a high quality tripod from the get go, especially one that has a future proof capacity because those will last you decades and in the long run you'll probably end up spending less than you would have if you kept buying and replacing less expensive tripods over the same duration of time. On that note though, if you're just a hobbyist who doesn't really put much weight on their tripods or doesn't really put their tripods through that much stress, this might be a great full-time tripod for you. And if you already have a big mean tripod and you're just looking for something small, light and compact to travel with, I think the Andour 57 inch travel tripod is a solid choice for the money. If you have any questions about the tripod, leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. But in the meantime, I have a question for you. What are you currently using to hold your camera up? Let me know your tripod, monopod, gorilla pod configurations and whether or not you like them in the comments below. Anyway, that's gonna be it for me. I hope you found this video helpful or at least entertaining. And if you did, make sure you leave it the old thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. But if you did not find this video helpful or entertaining, feel free to hit the dislike button twice. All right, I'm done.